Okay. Everybody hold your water. Ready? What's that? Balls, balls, balls. Triple shot. Balls. Green 18. Green 18. 10. Welcome to another film breakdown here. The O-Line Committee YouTube channel. Click that subscribe button, that like button. If you enjoy former offensive linemen taking you behind the curtain and telling you what's actually happening on the football field. Uh, I'm Phil Mackey. I didn't play in the NFL. I played in eighth grade, so I ask stupid questions to guys like Jeremiah Searles, Alex Boone, part of the O-Line committee as well, and uh, the Detroit Lions. Boy, that was Ooh. the Rams and the the Rams down a bunch of offensive linemen, Puka Nakua. I have a feeling those two teams might play again before the season's they'll, over. They'll see each other again in the playoffs. I mean, that I, I think we picked it on the pod. I think that's my NFC Championship matchup. I really do. I mean, that team, St- Stafford is a dog. I mean, he's always been a dog, but I mean, he's had some throws in this game that were incredible. But yeah. like we've talked about the Lions, when nut cutting time comes down, they don't scheme, they don't try and create. They just line up and say, who's in front of us? We're going through you. And if that's in your DNA and you can just fall back on that, whew, that's really hard to stop. And that well, two-headed monster of David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs is terrifying for defenses. Yeah, they, they're they loaded. It's the best offensive line in the league. The, re- the reason why I picked this for you to take us through, it's the game-winning drive in overtime. Mm. And it felt like me just, just watching late at night, watching the, uh, the national coverage, that the Lions said, you know what? Let's just lean on these guys with our offensive line and let's just march down the field and leave. Let's not be risky. Let's just be meat and potatoes. Let's take a look at the game-winning drive here. I'm going to pop this up on the screen. Pardon my multi-screen inception disaster here. So this is starting at the 30-yard line. It's overtime. Touchdown wins it. Let's go through the drive here. You tell us Absolutely. Line up tight here. You get two tight ends in the game. Right, you're in 12 personnel. Everyone knows you're running it. We run counter here, a power, and then just with the reverse. Mm. Watch this. All the so again, you gotta remember they've been pounding on these dudes all game. Watch the linebackers bite on this initially. Right? Watch Rosenboom and watch Reader here, 56 and 51. They get caught way up in there, right? They see pulling guard. Here comes Grand Glasgow coming across. Right, the backside defensive end. Go back real quick. All this, see, look at this. Yep. Watch right the backside here. defensive end is like, hey man, I got to get there. They're gonna hand this off. He comes screaming off the edge, number eight here. Watch, he's like, oh, down block comes oh. screaming off. And then again, I got to give some love. Look at the look at Frank Rag now. Right, number seventy seven, the center sneaks all the way out there. We highlighted Joe Tipman on our last film breakdown. This is what having an athletic center is becomes a weapon. Right there's Frank Ragnow, seventy seven, completely lost in the shuffle. He gets himself through. He's one on one with a corner that probably runs four four, right? And just watch him run and just stay on him. You don't got to kill him. You just got to stay in front of him, right? They're they're pussies. They don't want to hit you, right? Corners don't want to come up and hit a receiver. He runs himself completely out of the play, right? And this is a really nice job by Roseboom here, fifty six, just hustling his balls off to get back in here. But again, they bite on it. Again, you you trick them. Right, you they know everyone in the stadium knows, like, hey, this Lions team, they're gonna come downhill. Well, let's throw a tad little wrinkle at him. By right? the way, number let's number eight, downhill. eight thinks he made an oh. insanely good play here. At what point, watch eight, at what point does he think does he realize, oh damn yeah, it? He, he thinks, thought he, he, he thought he blew he's this about thing to stand up, up do the LeBron <laughs> pound down, like, oh yeah. And then he's oh shit. Right. Again, but I mean, they're so close. If Penny Sewell can get out here a little quicker, right? He sees it. He knows it. if he could have got out there a little quicker and got that safety, big time. Then you come right back. You get a fullback in the backfield. Oh, oh, David Montgomery is so good between the tackles. He's so good between the tackles, right? So now you just did a reverse, right? So you spread them out. You test the edges. Now you come back. Same formation, right? Two tight ends. Move one back into the backfield here as a fullback. So now you've got exactly what you want. You've got they're in their base defense. You come through here. The tight end does a phenomenal job on the front side, right? Coming through here. Watch this block by the tight end, right? So first of all, really no, excuse here. me. It's Penny Sewell. That's Penny Sewell, not a tight okay. end. I'm an idiot, right? So they're running weak side lead here, right? So they're going guard, and the, that is textbook double team by the right guard and the right tackle, right? They push all the way up. 
They come through here. Frank Ragnow and everyone again. So the way this is working is they're doubling 91 to 51. The center and the backside guard are doubling up to 56. 87 is going to come out on 97. And then you have the lead blocker coming up here, right? And then you cut off everyone on the backside. So let's just watch how it plays out. Frontside double team is phenomenal. Backside double team with Frank. Boom. They come through. He knocks the hip across, climbs, right? And there's the seam. Right, this Graham Glasgow. This is this is textbook on how to knock the hip across. You knock it across, Frank goes, and then you climb, right? And then there's the hole. David Montgomery pushes it, leaves it, and comes back through, and he's so close to breaking this tackle and just going all the way, right? Mm -hmm. But again, meat and potatoes in between the tackles. Trust our backs. Same thing here. Back in the backfield, two tight ends. It's the exact same play. It's the Dude, exact like, same Montgomery, play, Montgomery. Man, like it's he's tough to take down too. He he's. That's the thunder lightning combo in the NFL right now. Like these two guys, right? So they line up in 13 personnel, motion over, and they're like, hey, let's bring them back over here again. They're in the exact same defense and they're running the exact same play. So now you're just going to say, okay, Decker and Glasgow, you double to 51. You guys double again back here to Rosenboom. Bang, knock the hip across, and he cuts back in the exact same spot. Yeah. And then it, and this I, is just a great individual effort. It feels like on both these plays, they were supremely well blocked but david montgomery turns what should be like five or eight yard gains into 10 or 20 yard gains mm -hmm. yeah i mean and tackles and there's really the, the only guy that's unblocked is the unblocked player in the scheme so then you come back here quick route jameer gibbs gets lost out of the backfield I mean, oh this, this poor oh, guy this poor guy let's take a look at that again y'all want to see a dead body right <laughs> I feel bad for oh, these dudes. Oh, man. At least Jameer slowed down. Some guys don't even slow down. But again, watch the linebackers. The linebackers are just thinking it's run all the way, right? They run all the way. It's man coverage. Boom, they come here. 51. 51. Listen, I love Troy Reader. I think he's a good guy. He's not catching Jameer Gibbs. Like, he's not. He's not even. I mean, he's like a 4-9 guy. <laughs> he doesn't yeah. run very fast. So right here, Goff immediately sees the motion, knows it's man. The second he sees 51 flat-footed right here, he immediately knows his first reach, Jameer Gibbs. Okay, interesting. Right? So, that, he, so, he's, so, he's so go all the way back. Watch go all the way back to the motion. Right? So they motion. Who comes across? Is that Williams or Amon Ross St. Brown that comes across? Here, let's go back to the... No, you're good. I can see it. Yeah, go to the wide. Yeah, 14. Right? So, so, so right here, you see Amon Ross comes across the ball. This is called a pre-snap indicator. Right, so 14 runs across. He sees the corner run with him. He goes, okay, man coverage. Pause it. Bang. Right here. He knows that he's got man on Amon Ra. They might switch it out here, but he knows he's got two clear out routes here, and so the safety is going to bite on whoever comes across here. So the only person left out here that can guard Gibbs is Troy Reader. The second Troy Reader is flat-footed. Goff knows immediately. Right here, flat-footed, first read. Not even close. Yeah. It's so not was, even because yeah. now here, that much separation, that's yeah. 11 yards of separation for Troy Reader and, and Jameer Gibbs. Not going to happen, right? Just not going to happen. And that's just Goff understanding and playing within the scheme, right? Knowing, hey, they got to go man coverage here. Sweet. I'll just pick my match up. He knew he was going there immediately once that ball was snapped. Give you one more look from this side. Watch 51. He gets caught with his eyes in the backfield because he thinks what? Downhill. Flat footed. Boom, it's over. It's over. Right there. That's Goff being a really good quarterback and understanding the scheme. God, that poor guy. So then you come back. You get two pullers going here. Oh. This is called stutter. This is a weak side stutter play. Right? So he kills it. So they might have had a pass play on, but Goff comes up. He sees it here. He kills it. So they're going to go double team. Back to 56, 51 triggers. He immediately takes them. Boom. You get the kick out here blocked by, who is that, seven, Zeitler, right? That's Kevin Zeitler, 71. So you get the back, double team all the way back, but 51 shoots his shoots the A-gap right here. So they immediately take him. You pizza it. You've got kick out coming here. Boom. So Zeitler kicks out. This tight end does a great job of hitting this tight. So many tight ends bubble this pull, and they're like way out here. But because the this guy double team took the front side, he does a nice job of pizzaing and taking the double team's guy. 
right? And then look at this. This is just, he's not even touched till four yards. Like that's just a very well blocked play. And again, where's it hitting? Right between the tackles. You get some pullers, 51 shoots his gun. He kicks out. That guy runs around the block. And then Jameer Gibbs does the rest. Mm. Four, I mean, what was that? It was a 20 yard run, an 11 yard run, a 20 yard yeah. pass. And then you come back here, put David Montgomery back in the game. And this is just a simple inside zone. And the Rams know, I feel like, at this point. You can kind Look of see their They're body defeated. language. They're like, holy shit. There's we can't hands stop on the hips. They're breathing. So now you heavy. go. So now you get them in 11 personnel, right? We've talked about personnel. How we start the drive was all big personnel, right? 13, three tight ends, having a fullback. Now you get them in 11, you spread them out. You only have one tight end in the game. So now you have a light box. You have a six man box. Yeah. Right. So now you have a six man box. So you come through here. Boom. Double teams are phenomenal. Look at that. I could run through that hole. Dude. Like in my slow ass, and now you're talking about one of the best backs in the league at in between the tackles and David Montgomery, just hammering it up the middle there. So what do you do again? Let's keep them in 11. Motion across. This is called duo. This is his bread and butter of a play. Oh my gosh. This, this is, I mean, this is just demoralizing. If yeah. I mean, Rams, just get it over with. And just when you get it when, over with, when you're feeling it as an old lineman like this, like you have so much power and pressure so they bring this tight end across. I think it's Laporta, right? So they bring Laporta across on a motion. Boom. Again, light box. Pause it. So they've essentially, this is basically power without a puller, right? So you're big on big on the backside. 95, 91, and 8 are done. You get one double team here, right? So you get one double team. That's Braden Fisk. That's the rookie, mm -hmm. right? Going against two at all pros at one of their career welcome to the nfl rook right you get double teamed up to here they're going to 51 so these guys are going 55 up to 51 here right? i believe so let me see play it out yep yeah. so they're going to 51 43 is the unblocked player right so 43 is the unblocked player he's the furthest guy away right you leave the furthest guy away unblocked he's gonna have to come make a tackle on a downhill guy at seven yards and then look at this rugby scrum just <laughs> And he almost squirts through. He almost squirts through on that one. I feel like the Lions lead the league in rugby scrum yardage. 100%. That's just Dan Campbell biting kneecaps on their way down. And then just two untouched. For, and two for one appetizers at Applebee's now, too. Oh, Dan that was Campbell. such a great commercial. So then they come back across here. They bring, again, two tight ends in the game. Motion one across. Now they're in a 6-2. We call this a 6-2 front. Right? You got six men on the line of scrimmage. This is mano y mano. One double team there. Oh, look at the leverage. Look at the look, look at Penny oh Sewell. God. Look at Penny Sewell here. He scores on his man. Right? That's that's the coaching point for an O line when you have these these from the one or the two in. If you can score on your man, you're gonna get your running back in the end zone. This is a money block. This is what you paid Penny Sewell all that money for. They said, Hey Big Fell, we're gonna run right behind you. Boom, makes contact. Oh man. Guess where he finishes? In the end zone. Right behind right? Him. and they run right behind him. Fist knows it too. Fisk is like, wow, that guy's. This is not uh, Florida State anymore, friends. All right? This is this is big boy football. Penny knows it. Look, they got fired up. Penny Sewell's like, yeah, run right behind me. That was just a statement drive. When the nuts cutting comes down on the line, right? We're not going to put it on Goff. We're not going to put it on Amon Ross St. Brown. We're going to put it on the front guys up front. Those five guys, if they can stay healthy, are the number one offensive line in the league. That was mm. dirty, man. I mean, and, that was and also. I didn't watch that game and think, well, the Rams, maybe we overthought the Rams. I watched that game and thought, holy crap, the Rams had all these injuries. They're playing on the road against the maybe the toughest team, them, the, the Lions and the Niners in terms of just tough teams to play against up front. And they got to overtime, and they just kind of ran out of gas, and it's week one. I mean, they were down four starting O-linemen, right? Rob wow. Havenstein. Rob Havenstein didn't play. They're starting right tackle. Alaric Jackson is suspended for two games, right? So you started out with Joe Noteboom there at left guard, at left tackle. He goes down in the first half. Steve Avia goes down. They're starting left guard. He goes out, right? So that's four starting O-linemen that you're done. They're out, right? And so then you had to move Jonah Jackson, who started at center, out to left guard. You put the rookie from Arkansas, Bo Lemur, there at center, and they still gave him a chance to win. That's why I think the Rams, like, yes, they lost this game in overtime, but they're not going away by any chance. They keep playing no. like that. 
I mean, Cooper Cup looked great again. He looks like he's back to himself. So NFC Championship preview. I'm calling it right now. Yeah, I you might now the the Niners looked really impressive too, but there's uh there's a lot of I think the Rams and the Niners, those two teams meeting a couple times. Whoever whoever wins in television, man. Whoever wins that division and gets home field advantage in the playoffs will be the one that goes to the NFC Championship. Right? Yeah. If the Rams can win the division and they got to go through SoFi, I give the nod to the Rams. If the Niners end up winning the division, they got to go over there through Levi Stadium, probably give it to the probably give it to the Niners. Yeah. Uh, again, if you're a Lions fan, if you enjoy these film breakdowns, click that like button and the subscribe button on the O-Line Committee YouTube channel. He's Jeremiah Searles. I'm Phil Mackey. We'll catch you for the next one.